This is a shipyard menu available at any station or city docking port. At the top middle are the total credits that you have, and then the total that this ship built is going to cost you below that, and then the level of assembly points that you have, and then on the left side is the trade-in value of the ship that you currently own, and then on the right side is the cost to build the frame you're working with in the shipyard now. You can view the parameters of each below their respective values, and if you click on components here, you can view additional details about the design. Then you can click on ship config here to return to the main parameter list. The hangar button here gives you direct access to the station's hangar from the shipyard. This way you can store various equipment and cargo items that may not be transferable to a new design that you're working with. The templates button here lets you store and retrieve custom frame designs. The frame config button here lets you adjust the fundamental parameters for the frame design that you're working with. Each frame has a total design capacity that you can distribute between different parameters in the frame's design. Simply click on the boxes to change the capacity for each parameter. This way you can optimize your design for the various activities that you want to complete. When finished, click on the OK button here. On the left and right sides of the central menu are the performance specifications for the design that you're working with. As you change things, you'll see these bar graphs and numbers increase or decrease. The rotating ship in the middle is the design you're currently working with, and below that is a zoom in button you can click on to get a magnified view of it. You can also click and hold the left mouse button to rotate the ship around for different viewing angles. Then click on zoom out to return to the default view. You can click on the button here to change some of the coloring of the hull of the design that you're working with. And you can use the highlight button here to visually indicate which component you're currently editing. And you can see the highlighting change as I select a different component to edit from the central menu here. The position and scale sliders will also change, which we'll cover in a minute. The spin button here lets you stop and start the rotation of the ship in the middle. And if I zoom in again, you can see that the ship holds its position even when I let go of the mouse button. The directions button below the spin button removes or activates the direction indicators on the central ship. This way you can get a more unobstructed view if you want. As the names imply, the position and scale sliders let you move each component around and change their size. Each slider represents the X, Y, or Z axis, so X represents left and right, Y represents up and down, and Z represents forward and backwards. So by moving the sliders, you can see how I'm changing the position of the engine component. And I'll also move the scaling sliders around to show how you can adjust the width, height, and depth of a component. You can also optionally right-click on any slider bar to reset its position to center. And again, to change the parameters for a different component, simply select it from the central menu here under Component to Edit. The button here under Position will center the component currently being edited, and the Lock All button here under Scale will allow you to adjust the X, Y, and Z scaling of the current component together at the same level. The list of items on the left side is linked to the menu at the lower left corner. Currently, engines are selected, and you can scroll through the various available engines by using the scroll bar on the left side. You can then left-click on any of the available engines to get more details about it displayed in the lower left panel. To install one of the engines, simply click and hold the left mouse button and then drag the engine over to the ship in the middle. Then release the mouse button and the engine will be installed in the frame. If the frame you are designing has enough assembly resources left as displayed here, then the engine can be used on the frame. So you can install a more powerful engine if you have enough assembly resources left. Other categories of available items are available with the buttons here. You can choose from a range of different resistor packs, which help protect against particle cannon fire. You can also select from an array of different hull plating types, each with a unique benefit to your ship. For example, being easier to repair by a ship's repair system, being able to deflect energy weapon damage, missile damage, or reduce your ship's heat signature, or improve agility. You can optionally review any of the components installed in your current frame by clicking on the Components button here. Every ship includes a standard hardpoint for one module, so you can choose one from the list available here that offers a unique benefit to the frame you're designing. This can include improved energy and shield recharging, thruster performance, or improved countermeasure effectiveness or heat dissipation. And lastly, you can select a wing and thruster system to install on your ship. The frame design you're working with just needs to have enough assembly resources in order to install the wing and thruster system. Larger and heavier ship frames will come with more assembly resources, but they'll also be bulkier and won't be quite as agile. You can, however, install more powerful engines and wing thruster systems to help offset the lower agility, at least in part. On the right is a list of available ship frames for the location you're currently at. 
Like the component list on the left side, you can left mouse click on any of the available frames to review more details about it on the lower right display, and you can use the scroll bar on the right side to view the entire list of available frames. The list available at space stations and cities is divided into two parts. The first 10 frames in the list are designed by the Alliance, the second 10 frames are Federation. You can choose from any of the available frames that you can afford and that are available at the location you're currently at. To select a frame to work with, click and hold the left mouse button and drag the frame over to the ship in the middle of the screen. This will automatically open the frame configuration menu, so you can select parameters here and then click OK when you're ready to edit other parts of the frame. Any parameters of a new design that you're working on that don't meet the minimums of the current design you have will be highlighted in red on the right side of the center menu. From there you can change your design to meet the minimums needed to transfer equipment and weapons and various other things to the new ship, or you can store or sell what you can't transfer. Once you're finished designing the ship you want, you can click on the Trade and Build button here. Any difference in the cost will either be credited or deducted from your account. You'll then be alerted if there's any reason you can't build the ship in its current form, and the message log will also include any details on changes that need to be made, such as excess fuel that can't be transferred from your old ship design to your new ship design because it doesn't have the fuel capacity to hold it. If you decide you don't want to build the new design you're working on, and instead would rather keep the current design you have, you can click on the Cancel and Exit button here. That's all for this tutorial. Review the instructions included with the game or visit evercron.com for more information.